Hi, everyone. This is Scott McLeod with another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. Uh, it's my pleasure today to be with Mike Berry, Director of Curriculum and Technology for the Montpelier Roxbury School District in um, Rhode Island. I'm sorry, in Vermont. Um, <laughs> don't want to get this state wrong. That's pretty funny. Um, and Mike is going to share with us today a little bit about his district's doing. So, Mike, uh, what's your district's response been so far? I think you just said to me, You've been at this about three weeks in terms of remote learning. Uh, what are you all up to? Well, it's, it really started um, with prioritizing needs. You know, we wanted to make sure kids and families were getting fed. We wanted to make sure that they were getting the mental health supports that they needed. Um, we wanted to make sure that people had the things that they needed and that they were being healthy. So we, we really started there. Um, and then I think like every other district, we spent um, some time figuring out where do we start with this? What, what do we do? Um, and, you know, there were contractual concerns, there were um, family concerns, there were scheduling concerns, but we came out really strong with, with a, a good message and our, our superintendent did a great job of saying, we're not gonna be perfect. This is not gonna look the same for everybody. We're gonna take it a step at a time and we're gonna work together. And I think the fact that we did that from the beginning has really crept into as we were getting into more and more layers of detail about specifics and what tools we're using and what we're doing. That mentality of, hey, it's not going to be perfect. Let's, let's just keep working and learning together has really come through the whole way. And it's, it's been a success. As far as um, remote learning or distance learning, we are trying to do two things. Uh, we're really trying to focus on uh, concrete uh, scheduling for families. What we're hearing from families is they want some normalcy. They want some some habits of the day. Uh, they want to know what each day looks like. They don't want 30 emails. Um, so that's the second thing that we're doing is we're trying to condense and uh, create efficient communication with families so that they know where to go and what to do. Mm -hmm. um, generally in K through four, we already had some products that we were using for online learning that we've just extended to the home piece. And it's been an advantage to us because it allows students to use a tool that they already knew, they were very familiar with, um, and that it wasn't something so uh, demanding of parents and families in terms of time or knowledge base. So uh, we use clever badge systems for K through four so students can easily log on to their devices by flashing a badge. And um, we're uh, in the process of, of getting those to families so that students can log on and they can go to their, their online learning tools. Uh, five. We're doing in terms of equity. Um, so that's been that's been a, a fine line that we're, we're figuring out, you know, families that don't have internet, for example, or um, families that have multiple students in the one or two devices. Um, we want to make sure that we're, we're hitting that balance. Then nine through 12, honestly, we're spending a lot of time as a state talking about graduation requirements. And how do we make sure that our students who are seniors right now are still able to complete their learning uh, show their pro proficiency in all of their subjects and be able to move on uh, to, to college or career after. That's, that's been a huge priority for us in, in 9 through 12. Got it. So, Mike, you faded out for a minute when you were talking about 5 through 8. So give me the quick synopsis there. You, I, you picked up again with equity, but I don't know what you said before that. <laughs> so 5 through 8, uh, generally speaking, a lot of the teachers already had an online platform where they, a landing page, a website or a blog mm -hmm students would go for their learning and so they're amplifying those as a place for students to go to access their learning. Um, they're starting to piece together what are the priority standards that we're really going to focus on between now and the end of the year. We're not going to be able to do everything that we were doing. Um, so what are the most important things for our learners? Okay, got it. So Mike, you said a couple of things there which I'd love for you to highlight a little further. So one is this idea of some kind of concreteness of schedule or normalcy, right? Now, you also have to be flexible to the needs of families. So what does that look like, for example, for a student? Yeah, it's been a challenge, to be honest with you, um, because uh, some families want 8 a.m. 
you know, that's when we're going to do our morning meeting. We're all going to jump on Google Meet, and that's the routine we want to get into. But that's not completely equitable um, because all families may not be able to be there. So what we've really focused on instead is how do we make sure that we have a time during the day when we're establishing relationship building with mm -hmm. students? So that may be instead of the whole class, maybe it's a group of five to eight students, you know, and we're making sure that we're doing a Google Hangout meet and having some interaction with them. It doesn't have to be the synchronous learning at 8 a.m. Um, but right. for other classrooms and other families, that synchronous 8 a.m. might work perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're trying to do is just be responsive to the need, but not make a blanket plan for K through 12, because it's going to look different depending right. on your, your demographics, your, your parent groups and needs, your grade level, your content. Um, and so what we, we're operating with that tight and loose kind of mindset of like, here's, here's what we want to do. We want to make sure we're focusing on relationships mm -hmm. and supporting families. And then the loose is you can figure out what works best for you at your grade level or your classroom level. Gotcha. Okay. And then the other thing that I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about is you mentioned for your high school kids, this idea of graduation requirements um, and getting them, you know, with whatever they need to get out the door now, this year or later, right? So yeah. what do those conversations look like? Well, I think that there's two levels of the conversation. Vermont's the small enough state that we're trying to rally all of the high schools to really have that conversation together mm -hmm. so that it doesn't look wildly different. That being said, Vermont is also an individual state where everybody likes to do their own thing. So sure. there's two layers of both. Um, I think there's some complexities in the way Vermont um, does proficiency-based graduation requirements that are making that conversation extra special right now in terms of how do we make sure to uh, allow students to identify their learning and to show it and to demonstrate it. In addition to that, our school district has an amazing flexible pathways program where students are doing community-based learning or they may have a flexible pathway that they've designed or early college or whatever it is, cool. all of those things are going to look different now too. So having to go through and articulate for all of those flexible pathways, what's going to work. And we've got an amazing team doing that. Um, but those are like, it's, it's tough also because it's not like we are moving to distance learning for t the next 12 years. You know, we're, we're trying to get through to the end of this year, the best we can for students and families. And there's this kind of tough struggle between, you know, educators are perfectionists. We want, we want to do the best job. Right. And so there's this struggle between, like, I want, to, I want to do the knock it out of the park model right now, like tomorrow, versus, like, we, we have to be realistic about what we have at our, at our fingertips right now. Right. Got it. So we got uh, two, three minutes left. So what seems to be working really well? Where do the challenges or sticking points seem to be? Uh, what's working really well is communication and reaching out to families. Uh, we've had a lot of phone calls and conversations just checking in. So I think that we're doing a good job of getting the pulse of people. Um, fixed, sticking with comfortable platforms, online platforms, has been good. We had a lot of like, you know, uh, shiny object syndrome going on where the, you know, this platform's free now, this platform's free now. This kind of held the line and said let's stick with what we know um, for both teacher training and for uh, safety and security um, you know there's this huge debate in Vermont about zoom versus Google meet for example right, right. and there's a, a lot of conversation going on about that we, we chose to stick with Google meet just because it's what we know we can we can be secure with that mm -hmm. and we don't have to retrain a whole bunch of people really quickly right um, and so that worked really well what's what's been challenging I think is um, a couple things. One is sustainability. You know, so uh, we were talking about food service yesterday. We're running out of food. We, we don't know how to, how to sustain that, you know, so that, that could be a challenge. And people are just now starting to get sick in Vermont. So mm -hmm. what happens when people get sick? The other thing that we're struggling with a little bit is device lending. We did not, we were not one-to-one -one when this occurred. Mm -hmm. and so we've had to retroactively arrange for parents to request a device and that has been very cumbersome as we're in a stay-at-home order now yeah and so principals have had to take up the the heat on taking chromebooks out of carts and 
mm-hmm. logging the asset tag and things like that. And that, that's been a, a big challenge, but we're almost there. Wow. Okay. Gotcha. So anything else you want to share here at the end of our uh, time together? I just think it's, I think the, there's some really good positives that have come from this experience. Like I, I was saying to you before the interview, um, there's a lot of sharing going on and, and reconnecting with your personal learning network has been fantastic. Like reconnecting with you and other resources. People are talking and sharing at a rapid pace so that there's a lot of crowdsourcing around information. I think that's been really helpful. I think what's been challenging is the lack of routine for people and the flood of uh, my emails have quadrupled, um, <laughs> right. you know, at, at a rate of, of unsustainable measure. And I, I think it's, I think it's super important that we all, I saw a great tweet the other day that said, take whatever you were going to do and cut it in half. Yep. Um, we need to, we need to really slow down and take care of ourselves and find a routine Um, So there's some sense of normalcy here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, friend, thank you so much. Uh, Montpelier Roxbury School District in Vermont doing some great things. I'm sure that if you wanted to learn more about what they're up to, like I want to know more about the career pathways, flexible pathways stuff, uh, Mike can get you in touch with the right people in the district. And uh, Mike, appreciate your time. I know how busy you are. Thanks. Thank you so much.